All right, hello. If you're here, I'm assuming that you, uh, like me, have been playing this game called Final Fantasy VII, The First Soldier. And like me, you're probably very sad that this game is shutting down. Um, I'm... I'm I can say the same thing. It's I've had a really good experience with this game. Um it's uh it's been really fun to uh enjoy it with a lot of you. And you know, I I can say also that it's it's also offered a really cool opportunity for a lot of people who have enjoyed this uh the series. Um Final Fantasy 7 is, you know, a, probably one of the landmark games. Um it's got a long, long history and a lot of different games in its in its run specifically. But what really made this one stand out is you got to make your own character and actually include yourself in the game, in the actual uh, lore of it as well. And so I'm sure that there's a lot of you who, who if you played this game, you probably spent a lot of time and effort and sometimes even paid money to, you know, really unlock these costumes or whatever accessories and whatnot that you wanted to have your character wear, you know, yourself in this in Final Fantasy VII. Um, and so it's it's a real shame that that's being taken away, that the game is shutting down. But um, I did want to do this and show you this because you know with all of that time and effort spent and also money spent um there is a way to preserve your character um you can actually get that 3d model out of the game um and so you can have a memento of your time in the first soldier um i'm gonna walk through how to do this um but I also want to start by saying um, I do not at all condone anyone doing this for any kind of monetary or commercial gain. This is strictly something you should do for personal reasons. Um, I do not want anybody to risk any kind of a cease and desist from Square Enix. And so I strongly recommend that if you do this, you only do it for yourself and help a friend again not for commercial gain not for monetary gain if they can't figure out how to do this themselves then help them out but do it for free just out of the goodness of your heart so to start off there's a good amount of software that's involved with pulling this off um, it is it does get pretty complex um, you are going to need a windows computer for sure ideally one with a decent amount of power i'm working with a desktop here that has a built-in uh nvidia 1050 ti gpu i've got 16 gigabytes of ram to work with um i'm not saying you necessarily need that much but um i haven't tested this on a weaker machine so i don't know if it's going to work on on something uh like a laptop but if you want to give it a shot uh go for it um one thing for sure that you are going to need uh, doing this, um, if you have never gone into your computer's BIOS before, that is the little mini operating system that you see during startup. Um, you're definitely going to need to get in there because you have to make sure that your computer has virtualization turned on. If you don't know how to do that, there's a lot of different tutorials and walkthroughs on how to do it on, uh, if you just search for it uh, online. Um, Google's a great place to start for that. Just look up virtualization BIOS. Um, that's B-I-O-S. So I've gone through a little bit of just the startup here. We're gonna keep going with that as well. I'm gonna name four different pieces of software that you are going to use during this process. To start, um, Blender. This is a 3D modeling program um, that is actually completely free. It's open source. 
Um, it does animation modeling. You can make games in it. Um, it's a really incredible piece of software and it's going to come in handy for the end stages of our, um, of our, uh, project here. Next, you're going to need something called VMware Workstation Player. Um, this is a free virtual machine. So what this allows you to do is it basically lets you set up a virtual computer on your computer. So if you're running Windows, you could actually use this to install um, Linux or um, a different operating system or even just another Windows environment. That is exactly what we're going to do. And because of that reason, um, we are going to actually uh, also need a Windows install disk. Uh, VMware has one um, that is included when you download this workstation player software. Um, but it's it's a lot smaller than the actual uh, Windows installer disk. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some kind of download involved with it. So just be aware of that. Um, if you just create your own Windows installer disk, uh, it, it actually probably will go a lot smoother for you. Um, next, a very important piece of software and the thing that makes this all possible, uh, it's called Knox. It is a Android emulator for Windows. So basically, this program, it's, it's an Android emulator that will run any Android app uh, within reason and allows you to play Android games on your Windows desktop computer, or um, you can actually run um, even just generic Android apps. Like if you're doing any kind of testing or debugging, um, it's a great a little tool that comes in handy for that. Um, there's also a Mac version, but uh, just to clarify right now, this walkthrough, what I'm doing here is not possible on Mac. You cannot do it on Mac, so don't even try. You need a Windows computer. And finally, um, we're going to need to use this program here, Ninja Ripper. So this is a really ingenious program. It actually will is the part that actually gets your model out of the game. Um, what this does essentially is um, while any program on your computer is rendering a 3D model or any kind of 3D imagery, um, this program intercepts the render commands going to your GPU and captures that data and compiles it in a file format that you can later assemble in um, 3D development software like Blender. Now, I don't necessarily know all of the workings about this. Um, I'm not gonna, even going to try and explain it, but I can tell you that it works for this process. Um, here's the catch. Ninja Ripper currently is something that you have to pay to get. Um, it is $5 on Patreon, and that is a subscription. So um, you will need to basically subscribe to paying or uh, to get Ninja Ripper. It's $5 a month. So if you only want to use it for just this one process, then you can go ahead and just pay $5, get the program, and then unsubscribe from Ninja Ripper on Patreon. And um, you'll be able to get your models within this month or you know, if you take some time doing that until First Soldier shuts down in January, um, that's fine. And then, you know, you'll have gotten your use out of it. You can use it on other programs and games, too. So if you do want to keep supporting the developers of this, um, they do uh, send out new versions of the software every two months or so. And it just keeps getting better and better. So it's a really handy program for that. Um there is also a free version of Ninja Ripper um, that is out there, but I am going to warn you, it's an old version. Um, the latest version that I used for this is 2.0.11. The free one that's out there is like 1.71. 1 
So I haven't tested this uh, process with the free version and it actually exports your model in a different file format. So I'm just gonna warn you, uh, use it at your own risk. I will include links to all of these pieces of software, including the free version of Ninja Ripper in the description of this video. So go ahead and um, if you need to get those, go ahead and download them now. But again, free Ninja Ripper, use at your own risk. Um, some of the steps that I'm walking through here may line up with it. It might not. I haven't used it. It's up to you to figure it out if you go that route. Um, so if you have installed Knox Player, you don't actually have to uh, do anything quite yet with it. And the reason for that is you actually are going to want to, um, instead of opening Knox after it's installed, you're going to want to open something called Knox Assistant. It's a companion program that gets installed alongside Knox when you download it. So on Knox Assistant, there's actually this little window um, in the, on the left side and it says multi-drive manager. You want to go there and the reason for that is you, um, I think that the version of Knox that gets installed when you first uh, download it is the wrong version for Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier. Um, it doesn't work. If you try and load the game on that version of Knox, it, it won't run. So um, what you want to do is on Multi-Drive Manager for Knox, you actually want to click the Add Emulator button. And this will prompt a window where you get to pick a couple of different versions. The one that gets installed when you first get this is Android 7, the 32-bit or the 62, or I'm sorry, the 64-bit version. Um, however, First Soldier only runs on the beta 64-bit Android 9 version. So that's the one that you want to click on and install in order to run First Soldier on Knox. So you will do that. And you can see I've already got the Android 9 64-bit version installed and set up. Once you've installed it, you want to open it and actually go through the process of installing First Soldier. Now, this is a full Android phone environment. So you're going to get several different uh, apps that install when you get that Android 9 Knox on your computer. When you click that play button right there, um, it will actually open up the whole Android environment. Um, how you get First Soldier installed at that point is up to you. There are a couple of key points that you're going to want to have set up on this version of Knox when you do, though. First and foremost, um, performance you are going to want to give Knox the highest possible performance settings that you have available. I've got a four core CPU and 16 gigs of memory. I'm gonna give it two cores and four gigs of memory. You also want to run the game in the enhanced compatibility mode, which is OpenGL. You do not want to use DirectX, the basic mode. Um, First Soldier, if you try and open it in Knox in DirectX mode, all you will get is a black screen. It won't render. It only works with the OpenGL version. The other thing I've noticed, since the latest update for the game for First Soldier, the only device model that you can install it with where it will register as compatible is the Samsung Galaxy S20 5G. So under the device tab for your settings on Knox, you want to make sure that the Samsung Galaxy S20 5G is selected. Um, the one I was using before during the Halloween event was the S20 Ultra. That has stopped working now as of, uh, as of November. So I've been using the S20 5G. That's the one that uh, I was able to get running. 
Um, you might have some luck with the Asus ROG too. Um, but again, try that in your, at your own risk. S25G works for sure. So um, once you get into Knox, I'm not actually going to go ahead and go through opening it right now, but you'll have two different options. Uh, you will have the Google Play Store installed on Knox. It should be in a folder. Um, you'll have to sign into your actual Google account to get into it. Um, but if you do that, you can go onto the Google Play Store and download First Soldier. Or if you go to a website like APK Pure, you can actually get the APK file that installs First Soldier from their website and then sideload it in Knox. There's a button in Knox that will let you open the APK. Um, and then you can pick that file from your downloads and install First Soldier that way. Either way, once you have installed it, you need to actually open First Soldier and link your game data. Um, however you've got that set, uh, if you haven't set that on your phone, I would recommend doing that too. Um, you can find that under the settings in First Soldier, and I think it's under general settings um, from the main menu. But yeah, there's a link game button, and you want to connect it to your Google account, your face, your Facebook. Um, I think I think the best one to use for this process is Google, because that's the one that Knox will actually acknowledge. I think Facebook runs into some glitches. Apple may work as well. Haven't tried it. Um, but once you've done all of that, open First Soldier in Knox and let it install some updates because it's going to need to download some data. Once it has done that and you've got your game data linked, close the game. Don't go any further in Knox from that point. After you've done that, you should get a pretty big um, file size on your Knox player. That's your like emulator here. It should be something like eight gigabytes, just like mine is. That is all of the first soldier game data installed in Knox. At that point, you're ready for the next step. And that is to go into Knox assistance, multi-drive manager again, and click backup. Um, what that will do is it will create a complete backup file of your um, of your entire Knox emulator, the nine or the Android nine 64-bit version of Knox player, um, and you can actually back that up onto a jump drive. That will be very important later. So save that file on a jump drive. And then go ahead and you can actually just go ahead and close Knox. The next step, we're going to use Ninja Ripper. So at this point, you should have both Ninja Ripper and VMware Player installed. Um, you should already have the... Uh, Windows environment in VMware installed as well. So by this point, you should have an account created with Windows. You're, you've got a full operating system running within VMware. I may make a separate video on how to do that, but this is also something that's been explained in several other tutorial videos. If you don't know how to set up a virtual machine, um, I can probably drop a link to a tutorial on how to do that in this video description as well. But by this point, we've got Ninja Ripper installed and we've got the VM player targeted in it. So I went through my, I hit this browse button on Ninja Ripper and I uh, went to my file location for VMware player and I found the VM player executable file. Once you've done that, go ahead and click launch. Now, this is really important. Make sure that you are running Ninja Ripper as an administrator. Um, you can do that by going into the, by right clicking on the executable and 
by clicking compatibility and then checking run this as an administrator. So once you've got VM player loaded into Ninja Ripper and you've clicked launch, this VMware workstation player window will open. And I've got my Windows 10 virtual machine loaded right here. I'm going to go over the settings that I've got on this specific virtual machine. This is a Windows 10 virtual machine. So I've given this 8 gigabytes of RAM. I've given it two of my four CPU cores. I've also got virtualization enabled. All of those settings have to be checked. This is just like how you've enabled virtualization on your BIOS. Nox will not run without virtualization. The 64-bit versions have to have virtualization. Have that set. Give yourself a good amount of space. Um, 60 gigabytes is the recommendation. I doubled that. I went to 120. Um, this is just my Windows 10 installer disk that I have picked. That's how it got set up. Um, I think by default, the network adapter is set to NAT. I picked bridged, but both of them work. I'm honestly kind of trying to figure out if bridged may be faster. You'll run into some random disconnects from this first soldier server on NAT. It's a little unstable, um, but you may have better luck with bridged. We're going to find out. You can have the USB controller on. You're going to need it for when you bring your Knox emulator that you backed up into this virtual machine. Uh, sound card doesn't really matter. For display, okay, this is important. Um, I have uh, 3D graphics accelerated. You have to have that checked. I specified um, a monitor, uh, just one at 1920 by 1080. You can even do 720 if you want, both will work. And I set this to allocate four gigabytes of graphics memory. Um, I think if you have a better PC, do more. Um, I could technically do eight gigabytes, but I've ran into some errors that way. So those are all of my settings. We may run into an error when I first get Knox loaded up on this virtual machine. Um, I'm going to explain how to get around that too. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and start it up. And it's going to load up just like a regular Windows environment. All right, and we're in. So at this point, you'll see this is what your backup file will look like. It's the Knox logo with a folder. Um, I've already taken my jump drive. I plugged it into my computer, and I let the virtual machine read it as its own jump drive plugged in. And then I just copied the file, the Knox backup file, onto my desktop on this computer. From this point, I'm going to open up the Knox Assistant again. And I'm going to go over to my multi-drive manager. I don't care about this Android 7 64-bit version. We don't need it. What I need to do is I need to hit import. And then go to my desktop. And I'm going to grab my Knox player that I already set up with First Soldier from my normal computer. And you can just import that. Huh. Okay. Let's try that again. All right. Let's try and include an Android 9 emulator real quick. We're going to let it download, and we'll see if we have better luck after that.
So if you saw that error message, it told me to download the Android 9 64-bit version of Nox and then try importing. I'm guessing there's some critical files that it needs in order to um, get that file open. All right, it just installed. Let's try this again. Okay, I just learned something new. All right, so if you are trying to import your Nox player with First Soldier pre-installed, um, you have to have the Android 9 64-bit version of Nox already installed as a separate emulator, and then it will let you import this one. Once it's done, we can actually go ahead and delete that dummy Nox player. We don't have to use the first one. All right, successful import. So you can go ahead and delete that dummy Nox player. Bye-bye. And then I'm just going to rename this one to Nox First Soldier. Oops. There we go. All right, so... There is a possibility that when I start this, we're going to get a fatal error and Knox won't be able to go any further. But let's just try and open it and see what happens. And brace yourself for a lot of weird ads when you try this. Okay, this is exactly what I was worried was going to happen. So, you're not actually getting an error within Nox. You're getting a fatal error on the virtual machine. So, this error is actually making the virtual machine crash. Um, it has to do with the virtual CPU and, and how Knox is jumping on that. So I'm going to show you how to work around that too. And a link will be in the description for how to get around that too. So there we go. Our virtual machine just crashed and restarted. And I am going to pull up the I'm going to go ahead and pull up the explainer because I actually need a refresher myself on how I figured this out. So one second here. All right, we're back and I have good news. I have figured out how to fix this. So um, when you create your virtual machine, it's going to get its own little directory in your documents folder you need to go ahead and go to your documents and then there should be a folder called virtual machines and then there will be a folder with the name of your virtual machine for mine it was windows 10 Knox. once you get there there is a file in there called windows 10 Knox.vmx. so it's a dot vmx file and it will have your virtual machine as the name you want to go ahead and open with Notepad. And at the very bottom of it, all you have to do is just drop in this line here. I'll provide a link to the solution in the description so you can get that line of code as well. And just hit Save. And then you can go ahead and exit out of those. All right, so we've just run Ninja Ripper as an administrator again. Boom, here we are. I've got the virtual machine targeted again. I've added in my line of code that will fix that CPU crash. And we're hitting launch. All right, notice also this time. Um, in the top left corner of my display here, you see a little ninja star. And 
this little sign that says D3D11. That stands for Direct X11. That means Ninja Ripper has successfully injected itself into this um, program and is ready to extract 3D models. It did not show up the last time I ran the virtual machine because I didn't run Ninja Ripper as an administrator. So once again, make sure you run Ninja Ripper as an administrator or this will not work. Okay, we're back. And we're gonna go ahead and try, open up Knox Assistant. And we're making sure that we're gonna open up our pre-made Knox player with First Soldier installed. And it looks like we have. So we're going to go ahead and just hit that start button. And let's see if it works this time. And it's taking its sweet time. This is normal. But notice we cleared that 70% area where it had that CPU crash earlier. So we have fixed that problem. And again, this is this does normally take a very long time. Um, because you're running an entire operating system on another operating system's existing computer and resources, it can be a little slow. And you'll run into crashes like this too. The system UI isn't responding. Just go ahead and hit close app. And it should load back up in a moment. And then you will get your first peek in this video at what Knox actually looks like. There it is. All right, so that tools folder, in case you're wondering for your first Knox setup on your normal computer, this is where you'll find the Google Play Store. If you click and drag, you can get to page two and there's the Play Store. Um, the reason we set it up on our normal PC is because that Google Play Store crashes very frequently in a virtual machine. It is almost impossible to run. So I didn't even mess with it. I just went ahead and took care of all the setup on our normal computer. And then I've got the pre-made uh, Knox player ready to go inside my virtual machine. I've even taken care of all the updates for First Soldier so you can see it's got that first anniversary logo on it. We're ready to run. Let's try it. It's going to take a good amount of time for this to load up. Remember, this is a not the greatest um, hardware setup for this. And First Soldier is probably going to run like molasses in here. You may even have it crash back to the Knox screen, and you'll have to tap it again and see if it'll try again. That actually happens on my actual phone. I, I think that's some kind of bug with it, where uh, when I try and load First Soldier, it'll just crash back to my phone's main screen. So I almost wonder if that's like a just an actual just bug with the app itself, but whatever. Okay, we've got the on-screen keyboard for your touch screen. So that's a good sign. That means we're getting somewhere here. Knox is pretty interesting. You can actually, um, if you want to try it on your main computer, you can actually play First Soldier on your PC with this app. Um, you can move the keys around, and so you can have different keys on your keyboard correspond to the different buttons on the touch screen for First Soldier. Um, there's even a way that you can bind your uh, mouse to look around as if you're, you know, dragging your finger on the screen in the game. So it actually is probably the closest thing to a PC port of this game that you can get. Um, if you want to try it, it's, uh, it's worth a shot. It's a shame, really, that 
Um, Knox just very recently uh, released this Android 964 bit version, and that is um, partially why the first soldier started working on it again. Uh, it did not work with Knox until very recently. And look, there's our Square Enix in, uh, on screen. So we should see the first soldier loading screen here in a minute. There it is. Okay. So we're in business. You can probably faintly hear the music. And oh my God, you can see this, this game is just running like molasses. Um, it's not the best setup, but we're gonna, yeah. I've given it, given it everything that this virtual machine can give it, so we're just gonna kind of venture ahead. Oh man, oh God, it wants to download three gigabytes of new data. Wow, is this a new update? I might check my phone real quick and see if that's the case on, on the actual game too. All right, brace yourselves, this might take a minute. It looks like when I tried to open the game on my phone, it didn't prompt me to download all of this. So if I had to guess, um, I may not have had the the absolute most up-to-date version of the game in Knox, so we're going to have to let it take its time to download the extra files it needs to run properly on here, and this could take a while, so. Alright, so that literally took something like an hour at least for that download to finish that was a two gigabyte download so i hope that that's some indication that your internet signal is not the greatest on this virtual machine so um i would not expect to be uh going in and, and playing any matches um while you're doing this and while I'm while this is finishing up loading, um, let me go ahead and click the uh, the start button here. So we're letting that load up with my character. Let me explain for a second why are we doing it this way. Well, the answer is this: Ninja Ripper only can extract 3D models and renderings that are done with DirectX. It can't do it with OpenGL, which is, ironically, the only way that First Soldier will render in Nox. So if you try and just run Ninja Ripper on Nox on your normal computer, it won't be able to gather anything from Nox because, again, First Soldier is running in OpenGL and Ninja Ripper is looking for DirectX 3D models. So the virtual machine that we're playing this in is actually getting around that. Um, the reason being that um, the virtual machine, VMware, emulates OpenGL 3D with DirectX, which suddenly makes Ninja Ripper able to grab it again. It looks like we got an internet network unstable message here. Just brace yourself, you're gonna get hit with at least a few of those while you're doing this. Let's go ahead and just hit the start button again. Let's see if we can get this going. All right, look at that. We finally managed to get to the lobby. So a lot of it just boils down to persistence. You just have to treat, keep uh, trying to get in there. Oh, and somebody joined my team and I'm Regretfully, I can't play with them. All right. So, I know for sure 
that getting your model out works on this lobby screen, on the barracks, and on the training center. I haven't tested the Chocobo stables, but what this means is you can go into the barracks, you can change into whatever outfit you want to, and then extract your game model of your character still in the barracks. You can also, if you're in this lobby, you can have people join your team and you can actually extract your character and their characters at the same time. So if you have a friend that you want to help by doing this with, that's how you do it. Have them join your team and then you can extract the model along with yours as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that a shot to start. Um, and just a heads up, I don't recommend trying to start a match. Even exploration mode, it usually ends with um, the game losing connection and crashing back to the, the main start screen. Um, try to stay on screens that have a smaller model count because that will um, help prevent the overload. Okay. We're going to go ahead and try a rip um, of just this screen as it stands. All right. I've just pulled up Ninja Ripper, the launcher that we used to open the virtual machine. You want that in focus while you're doing this. So you want in the virtual machine on Nox, you want to navigate to whatever screen or whatever area you want to capture in First Soldier and then pull up the Ninja Ripper launcher window. And the reason for that is, if you hit your extraction key while the virtual machine is in focus, nothing will happen. But if you do it while you have, while you've clicked on the Ninja Ripper launcher, that's when it will successfully extract. Okay. Um, there's two ways that you can extract your models. You'll notice on that top left corner, it says press home slash insert. That's because Ninja Ripper has uh, two different methods of grabbing the models. Um, I know for sure that only the forced rip method works properly. And that one is done with the insert key. So, how this will work, I'm going to press the insert key. And then I usually will wait 10 seconds. And then I'll press it again. Um... This typically results in the virtual machine crashing. So once you've done this, like make sure you are absolutely set wherever you want to be to get this because you've only got one stab at it at a time. And then you have to reload the virtual machine, get back in Nox, and open First Soldier again. So we're going to go ahead and do it. And I'm going to walk through what happens. And I'm bracing myself. All right, here we go. All right, it may not have crashed. Let's open our rip directory and we're gonna check. So I went to my Ninja Ripper launcher window and there's a button that says open rip directory. That's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm looking through here, seeing what I can find.
Okay, so... I think... I think we did it. We had a successful wrap. Or, I'm sorry, rip. And amazingly, um, the virtual machine did not even crash. So, when you go into your rip directory, for first soldier specifically, um, you are looking for a folder that has MKS sandbox executable in the file name. So this right here, that is the actual 3D graphics acceleration within um, VMware's virtual machine. And if you notice, it looks like we took two different rips here. There's quite a bit of model details in here. Frame zero looks like it, it was our successful rip. This one, we didn't really get much. Um, but this one has quite a lot of details. These NR files, these are your models. These DDS files, those are the textures. So all of the details like the color and the actual um, the actual graphics overlaid on top of the 3D model, that's what those textures are. That's what a texture is. That gets stretched over the model to actually look like a real thing, like a, a person or or the carpet on the floor, whatever you, you would call it. So that's awesome. We, we didn't even have our virtual machine crash for that. Um, but mission accomplished. All right. So we have now opened Blender now that we've handled our rip of the models. Um, Blender is our 3D modeling interface that we are going to use to look at what we got. Um, very important. When you get Ninja Ripper, it comes with an importing plugin for Blender. So on your first couple times giving this a go, you're going to need to first find that plugin and load it in Blender so that you can actually read those NR files, the Ninja Rip files. So if you go to your install folder for Ninja Ripper, for me it was just in program files, um, there's a folder called importers and it will have instructions for how to load up and our files in Blender, how to get that plugin. So I have that installed. And I'll probably include a link in the description for it as well. But you get two actual options for how to do that. There's the Ninja Ripper 2 World Space, and then there's the Ninja Ripper 2 Local Space T pose. Oh, T pose, the meme. What a meme it was. Okay, so. WorldSpace actually imports everything as it stood uh, when the extraction took place. So if you want an exact recreation of the world, the map, whatever, and how your character was posed in it, you want to use WorldSpace. That typically also requires some extra steps. Um, there's a log file that's generated when you perform an extraction. It's in the, the same folder where you have your models and textures. Um, you will need some data that's in that log file in order to do a proper import with WorldSpace. It's a little too much for me to explain right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip that for now, but I'll probably include some links to that. Uh, in the description as well. I'm getting a lot of links here, my God. Um, but the one that we're going to use is actually the T-Pose one, because that one you can actually do pretty quickly. So, I'm going to click that. Alright, so this is my RIP folder for uh, Ninja Ripper. 
and I'm going in and I'm just going to import everything. We're going to have to do a little bit of some hunting in order to find specifically what we're looking for here. But let's see what we got. It's loading. You might see it freeze up there for a second. That's okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so we got uh, a decent amount of stuff here. We at least got a helicopter. So I'll just go ahead and move that guy out of the way. This is you know, this is fun to kind of talk about too. You're going to run into some duplicates. So we actually ripped two helicopters. Because of the way that this extraction takes place, it's pretty thorough. And uh, you're going to find that you're probably going to get at least two of everything. So you can just go ahead and start deleting away at some things. Um, we have a lot of architecture in the background here that we don't need. Like this big box here. We can just delete that. Bye-bye box. All kinds of stuff. Wow. We can just get rid of all that. That's a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need. Some of this is going to look a little weird at first, but you're just kind of sifting through all of the information that you just captured. Because we don't need all of it. That's kind of a pretty cool thing to show off, though. Look, that's the that is a Shinra helicopter right there. That is your the thing you fly in on. Nope. Let's delete this out of the way. Gotta get rid of that. Uh, looks like I got a bunch of duplicates of that there. Okay, so we got rid of that. Got, I'm gonna get rid of this floor here. Stairs, don't need those. Oh boy, another thing. Blender's navigation is a little weird. I'm I'm still kind of figuring it out myself, so uh, just be ready for some of that. Don't need these steel uh, steel beams. We can delete those. How many of these did I get? Oh my gosh, several. Random, random stuff. 3D details we don't need. Okay, there's our helicopter, and he's pretty cool. All right, now we're going to actually look for our characters. And there we go. You can start to see him now. Oh, that's awesome. So, I actually just got two. Um, I captured myself and I captured Peebus. Okay, we are still deleting some of this architecture. Random plant, don't need that. You want to be careful that you don't accidentally delete, um, Part of your character so do be careful about that but we're just going through got rid of that plant chipping away at this it's like we're we're, we're making a, a statue we're making art all right this stuff don't need that this looks like a firework yeah we don't need that get rid of this i have no idea what this is maybe it's a painting I think it's those screens in the lobby right now. Yep, just deleting a bunch of those. That is a lot of them. I'm just clicking, and then as soon as I see it highlighted orange, I'm deleting. Still working on it. This is also part of why I like uh, extracting from the barracks specifically because the lobby has a lot of this like unnecessary stuff in it and you're going to see a lot less of that when you take care of extractions in 
the barracks. It's a little bit of a simpler map, so there's not so much stuff. The training center is a mess. Um, there's really no reason to ever extract from that. But we're almost there. Okay. And what you'll see here too is everything kind of this starting point, this point of origin for for this uh, current map we're on, you have these where these green and yellow, or I'm sorry, green and red lines meet. That's where everything kind of gets stacked up and placed when you load in T-Pose mode. And it's aptly named that because it actually does you a favor and puts your character in a T-Pose. Now, if you're interested in, you know, making just like a statue or something or a 3D printing your character, um, this isn't exactly the best pose for them. Uh, but it, it actually is a great setup for people who know how to do 3D modeling and rigging because a T-pose makes it really easy to put a skeleton in that model and actually start moving the limbs around and, and put them in place or pose them themselves. So if you want to do, if you're kind of just looking for uh, one pose and you're good, world, uh, world space import for Ninja Ripper is better. But that's okay. All right, so I'm going to start moving some of this around because we've gotten it down to just the two characters. And you can see my my outfit is kind of overlaid on top of this other characters. So I've just moved my uniform out of the way. This looks like this is specifically the monk outfit. So we're just going to move all this. And maybe if I'm lucky, I can grab that too. All right, so there we go. Um, there's all that, all that like stuff, like that belt and everything that looks like it's all part of the, the other outfit. So we've put the monk over here and then this formal outfit is kind of still here. I'm going to delete these like little, those like octagons, hexagons, something like that. I don't know. Uh, we're going to put those over there. I think this is a searchlight. Don't need that. Uh, another searchlight. You can get rid of that one too. Oh my, there's a third one. Okay, that was the last searchlight. All right, so all this stuff I can slide over. Oh, it's, it's getting the background. So much stuff. Okay, we can slide this over and have it line up with all the other formal wear that we got. All right. This backpack, that's definitely the monks. We're going to give that back to the monk. Put that over there. Okay, and this part's going to be a little bit tougher. So there's both of their heads are down there, but their like hair and the backs of their heads are up here. So what do we do about that? That's such a cute backpack. Well, we can definitely move this backpack up and kind of line it up with the character here. There you go. There's a backpack. Okay. So how do we get those heads? That's going to be a little challenging, right? Well, we'll see what we can do. I'm going to get the hat up and I can put them up here and maybe line them up with the head there. So that's that out of the way. It's pretty difficult to get this uh, to get this because you got two people's heads there. So you're just going to have to start pulling away and kind of line up what looks like. Uh... Okay, so there we go. That's that's the monk's head. This is that's my head. I'm guessing that's my forehead. Yeah, that's my forehead. It's kind of like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. There's that guy, okay. And we got two pairs of eyes here. That looks a little creepy. Guessing those are mine, because they line up. Okay, so that's that. And then this is the monks. Put that over there. I think that's my nose, maybe. Yep, that lines up. 
That nose lines up over there. I think. Is that my my mouth? Yep, that's my mouth. I think this is their mouth. Okay, and then earring. We'll put that over here. What is that? Huh. Don't need that. Uh, I think we can go ahead and just throw. Well, that might be something. We can throw these away, though. Don't need those. All right, so those are the heads. And we can just very carefully bring them on up. I'm still getting the hang of blender. I'm not I'm not very good at it. Well, look at that. Bing bang boom. Almost there. Not quite. Uh, bring that up a little higher maybe. Move it forward. Uh, maybe two forward. Oh, no? I think we're good, actually. That might be right there. That might be it. Okay, so that's put together. Nice. All right, and then we got to go do my guy. I'm just going to pick him up. And... His head over here. All right. That's kind of cool. <laughs> it looks like a chef's hat on him. Uh, is that lined up? I think it is. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Just like that. Whoops. Got to get back over here. The zoom controls in Blender can be just nuts. Okay. That's in place, and then his hat is going to go down ever so carefully. Oh, I'm manually moving that, so that's not working. Oh, you want to try and move along the grids as best you can. Make sure you have these like lines. All right. Hey, there you go. All right. So, um, that was quick and dirty. Oh, there's got to put his backpack on him. Let's just put that up there. Maybe push a little back. Okay. So quick and dirty. That's how you assemble two soldier candidates out of first soldier. Um. That is them. Uh, this is, I'm sure, going to be a very long video, and it's a long process, as you can probably tell. Um, but I find it rewarding. I think that it was, it was really uh, challenging to figure this out, and it was. I felt pretty accomplished after it was, after I got this down. So I hope you feel the same, because, um, you know, this is a. Uh, this is kind of going to be the one way you get to keep your character. It's pretty cool. Um, this, and I can't, I haven't even gotten into texturing yet. That is, I'm still kind of working on figuring that out myself, but just know you do have the files. You do have the textures, so you can put them on. Um, hopefully somebody a little more experienced than I comes along and actually knows how to use that and can apply them. Um, but for now, this is your, at least you've got the models and you have the textures for, if you can figure it out later. Um, and this, you know, if, if somebody figures out how to, you know, create a mod that you can put this in final fantasy seven remake, how cool would that be? You can have your candidate from first soldier modded into the, the game. Um, so that's the kind of possibilities that you can, you can do with this. So I'm going to go ahead and call that a stopping point on, on this tutorial. Um, I hope that this was informative for you and that 
you get to keep this uh, piece of the Final Fantasy VII history uh, thanks to doing this. Um, this is strictly for personal preservation of my character and my time with this game, and I hope it is for you too. Uh, thank you again for watching and for giving this a shot, and um, I'm excited to see what everybody does with their characters once they have them. So I hope that you uh, come up with some cool different uh, experiences with them, maybe mods, who knows. Uh, but good luck to you, and if you ever have any questions about how to do this or run into trouble along the way, feel free to reach out. Oh, and <laughs> I almost forgot. Uh, if you found this helpful, uh, feel free to like this video or subscribe. Um, I try to make content like this and walk people through how to do things like this. So uh, if you're looking for other guides, maybe I can do another one next that's up your alley. So I hope that uh, your time with the rest of First Soldier is, is as fun as it will be for me.